If you've ever looked at a complex object and wondered how to even begin to model it, this video is for you. Now this video is actually a sneak peek into my 3D Artist program, an eight week intensive bootcamp to guide you to being a 3D artist with assignments and feedback to help you develop fast. In this video, I'm sharing one of the essential foundations you need to become a better 3D artist and be able to make anything you can think of. I'll not only show you this powerful but simple technique of visually deconstructing anything into basic shapes, but what I want you to do is follow along and try these things out for yourself. This should hopefully by the end of this video give you the confidence to model almost any object in Blender. Now this is just a glimpse of what you'll learn in the full eight week program, where we guide you step by step from beginner to confident 3D artist. So if you like this, then check out the link in the description to join the program. It's on sale now and starts on the 7th of September. Now let's get started learning how to make anything in Blender. This time I'm not going to give you any clues to the object you're going to create. I'm just going to tell you the object and you need to create it. The idea is to really start thinking for yourself rather than just copying the instructor. So in previous videos, I gave you the shape to start off with and you copied it. This time I'm just going to give you the idea. So we're creating a bit more of a challenge for you now and you're becoming more independent. So the item I want you to model is a desk lamp or table lamp. Obviously you're going to get lots of different types of table lamp, that's fine. Just have a go at creating a table lamp by yourself completely independently. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with that. I'm really interested to know what's the first thing you did. I imagine if you're anything like me, you went into Blender and started modeling from your memory. However, it's always much better to quickly grab a reference, even if it's something as simple and basic as a table lamp. Quite often I start modeling something and then go and get a reference when I think, actually, how does that look? So it's much better to start off with a reference, then you know you're on the right track straight away. So a nice easy place to start is Google. I've typed in lamp, not even table lamp. And my mind was thinking something along these sort of lines. You might have come up with something like this. Absolutely fine. Let's look for a few more if I go into images, see what they come up with. And there's lots of different options here and you could have picked any. Maybe even something a bit crazy like this. For now, I'm going to keep it simple and go for something along these sort of lines. So I'll click on that. So I've got a nice reference of it just there. And look at that, a bargain at only 12 pounds might buy myself one. Okay, so let's think how we would model this. With any hard surface modeling like this, it's best to break it down into sections. So we've got a top section here. Oh, I can click on it actually, that helps. So a top section here, we've got the bendy bit, whatever that's called, and then the stand at the bottom there. So those are the big elements. We've also got the detailed elements, so we can make this sort of ribbed effect if we want to. We've got this detail at the top here, joining the bendy bit to the actual lamp. I don't know what this is called. <laughs> we've also got a bit of detail of that down the bottom. We've got a light switch. We've even got a plasticky sort of base there. And we're assuming this is metal, so it's heavy and weighted, so it stands on the desk. There'll probably also be some sort of cabling somewhere, probably out the back here, perhaps. So there's two stages. One is the big objects and two is the details. And I would block out those big objects first and then start doing the details. Always do the big objects first, details second. The reason being, if I make a big object like the top of the lamp here and it's slightly the wrong shape and I've started on some details like this detailed section here, it might be that I'm slightly out with the big shape of the lamp and then I have to start adjusting that. Then I have to start adjusting all the smaller details as well, and that can be a pain. So before I go into modeling this myself, let's look at a few other items and see how I would model them and break them down into sections. So let's start with this kettle here. Have a quick look at this and consider how you would break it down and start modeling. Okay, so as I identify, we've got the big shape here that we want to get first that's crucial to these smaller elements, which are the details. So this spout here, I would say is a detail. We've got to get this shape right first before we start doing this. Otherwise, if we try and adapt this, we have to adapt our detail that we've done here. The handle I would say is a big object. The lid is a big object, but I would do this entire shape first and cut the lid out of it so I know that it matches up. And this section here, this plastic section, you could either do that as a separate material or a separate object. Handly bit on the top there to pull the lid off, that's a detail as well. 
And of course the base there, I would call that a big object because it's not going to affect the other areas or any smaller details. So we can model that as one of our first objects. Okay, let's take a look at this object, a wheelie bin. This is what we have in the UK. I don't know what you have where you live, but we can wheel these around and put our rubbish in it. So this is a much more complex shape. How would we go about modeling this? Take a look and see what you think. Okay, well, we've got the sort of big shape. So I'd model the big shape first. We've got the wheels, which are a big shape. They're independent, so we can resize them depending on the size of the shape here. So that again, we can model to start with, that's no problem. The difficulty comes with this kind of step at the front here, this extruding lid bit here, which is actually two sections. This is part of the base here, and this is a separate section, a lid. And the lid has these molded parts here, which are quite awkward. Let's just look at it from different angles. It's a little bit tricky to see, but you can see that the lid is a separate object. So I would model that as such. But you can see also that lots of these things are molded together into one shape. So let's take the lid, for example. I'd start off making the base shape. So this kind of shape here out of a cube. This extrusion here, I'd probably model it separately and then I'd join it together later. So I'd actually change the topology of my lid so that it had enough space for this handle to be joined to it. It's a similar case for something like this. I'd probably cut a section out lift it up and then fill in the topology between the two. But again, this is all after I've made the base shape here so I don't have to adjust these details. That's really frustrating if you need to do that. The same for the base here, the very top of the base, this kind of lip here. I'd certainly get the base shape first and then extrude this out and start modeling it after I got the main shape. These kind of joining pieces here, which are kind of structurally holding this lip in, I'd probably do those as separate objects because they don't seem to be as molded like this one is, where I'd have to join it and have it as part of the lid. These ones, I think I can get away with as separate objects. So you have to think a bit like that. Do you need it to be all one object? You can have overlapping objects in one object. That's absolutely fine. So overlapping faces is what I mean there. It's very common to model like that. And it's much easier than adding in loads of extra topology to make things one object seamlessly and manifold. So no gaps or no overlaps. So hopefully that's given you some guidance about how you can model almost anything. Let's go back to our lamp now. Just so you can see the lamp more easily, I'll bring it in instead of my outliner. So I'll change it to the image editor. Bring it out very slightly so you can see it and open that up so we can both see nice and easily what i'm modeling i'll get rid of the timeline i don't need that and i need to model my three separate objects so the base the bendy bit and the lamp itself let's start with the base so you might think a cylinder is the easiest way that's fine if that's how you modeled it and we've got a curve here the base can be a separate object the plastic at the bottom that's a detail i'll do that later we're just trying to get this basic shape here with this curve outline. Now I can actually use the default cube for this. If I press control two to do a subdivision surface modifier, so that's adding a subdivision surface modifier there. Let's scale it down in the Z and then go into edit mode. Control R to do a loop cut and then that's a supporting loop at the bottom here. But we need a little bit more structure at the top so I'll just bring that back to the middle and maybe add an extra one down the bottom. And we're starting to get that basic shape. We need some more solidity at the bottom there. So we need a supporting loop at the base there. And it's probably a bit too much of a curve going up so I can alt left click on this, GG to edge slide it up until I get what looks a bit more like the shape I've got there. It looks like I'm going to have to bring this all down a little bit. So into object mode and bring it in like so. Right click, shade smooth. And I'll up the levels. We're just about there. I probably need to bring the top face up a bit. So G then Z. And we're looking relatively close. Maybe I need to bring this one down. GG. Let's go to front view. Now you can see this goes up and then it goes in very slowly. It's not doing that. It's quite flat here. That means I need on this top face here an inset and see what happens when I put the inset in and then go to front view again. You can see now I've got that curve. So it's basically beveled this edge with one edge loop there and one edge loop here. And I can make it more curvy by GG to edge slide this down, GG to edge slide it the other way. And you can change the kind of profile of your curve that way if you need to. I think we're just about there though. I probably need to scale it in a little bit. 
and it's probably a bit closer to there. I'm being a bit overly precise, there's no need to go that close for this exercise. So we've got the base there and we've done it with an actual cube just by using a subdivision surface modifier and supporting loops. I think that's the easiest way because I can adjust this nice and easily with fewer vertices and therefore fewer edits. If you did it with the cylinder, it's much the same process, but you've just got more vertices around the outside. Okay, so let's try the top of the lamp now. I'm jumping to that because there's a different technique for doing the bendy bit, but it's a very similar technique for doing the lamp part. So I'll duplicate this, bring it up slightly. Let's bring it right up to here, scale it in. So Shift Z, and you can see we've already got the end of the lamp there into edit mode and let's start extruding bits as I need to. So we'll take this end face, extrude it out, scale it up and extrude it out. And I'll do one more extrusion so it's got some solidity at the end there. And it's kind of a funky shape actually. I quite like this if you wanted a stylized version of this. But I'll go back to object mode, scale it, shift Z, so it's not on the Z and we're getting a bit closer there. I just need a bit of adjustment. So into edit mode, into x-ray view and I think we need to bring this one forward a bit somewhere around there I'm being a little bit rough and there's more of a curve at the back here as well I believe I can probably go to my edge loop and maybe delete this one can I yes I can so let's control x to dissolve it notice I've got two loops next to each other for that pinch effect just here if I press control x you can see the shape that creates so I'll undo those changes and we're looking relatively good I'll press Alt Z to go back to solid view and just look at the relationship between the two. This one should be much bigger, probably around there. What I'm not doing though is thinking about the actual size of these objects. If I press N on my keyboard, notice the scale isn't applied. I'll come back to that in a moment. But the dimensions of the object, it's over two meters in the Z axis. So we need to select both these and scale them right down. Let's scale them to about there. Uh, looking at my grid, this looks about 30 centimeters. So we need to bring it down a bit further probably around here. So let's just click on that again. About 15 centimeters. That's probably about right now. So I'll zoom in a bit. I probably should bring this to the floor actually and zoom in on these objects. Okay, so with my object here, how do I create the opening? Well, let's go to edit mode, go to face mode, select the bottom face and delete the face. Now we've got an opening like that. We haven't got any solidity here though. So we can go to our modifiers, add modifier, type in solid, and we've got a solidify modifier there. This should be one centimeter, but it's looking very thin. Have a think why it's so thin, even though it says one centimeter there. And remember, this is supposed to be 15 centimeters across, so that doesn't look one centimeter. What's the problem? Well, if I press tab to go back to object mode and look at my scale, remember I said I hadn't set it. So if I press control A now and scale, you can see that thickness now looks about a centimeter, which is actually a bit too wide. I think the thickness of the metal will be about two millimeters, I would say, something like that, and that looks a bit more like it. Okay, so let's get to front view. Let's position these a little bit. And I left this bendy bit till last. If I was modeling this and it was to be animated, I would actually make it a straight object and then add the bones to it and use the bones to bend it. In this case, I'm just modeling as is, as if it's going to be a static prop in a game, for example, so I can afford to have it in this position without the need to edit. On that point, I did model this in front view to start off with, rather than trying to put it into position and then starting to edit its shape. It's easier to edit things with the global axis set up so you can easily just scale in the Y or move things in the Z and so forth. If you're at an angle, you always have to use the local coordinates. So it's just that little bit more awkward. But now it's got the shape, or roughly the shape anyway. I'll move it into some sort of position around there, actually maybe up a little bit and across a bit, somewhere around there. How do I do this bendy bit here then? Well, you could use a cylinder, like I was saying, and then deform it slightly. The easier way though is to use a curve. So Shift A to add, curve, and then Bezier curve. I'll scale that down and reset the scale. So control A to set the scale, then into edit mode. And you can see I've got these bezier points and you can move them and then rotate them into position. They take a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, they're really helpful. So this one I'm going to scale down and you can see those handles as they're known and their effect they have on the curve. And you can see that my curve is kind of overlapping the line a little bit. It doesn't seem to do that there. So that means for this one, got to bring that handle in slightly 
so it doesn't go too far over that line. So that's roughly the shape. You might find actually that there's a sharper kink in here and then I would need to select both these, right click and subdivide them. Then I can put a kink in here like this so it's a much sort of sharper curve and I can change the scale of this to adjust that curve if needed. So we've got that curve going up there. Now all that's left is to add some solidity to it. So you go to the curve properties on the right hand side here, scroll down a bit and it's under geometry. And there's a bevel here and you just use the depth just there. And I think about 0.4 might be about right. I think that looks good, yep. And there we've got our lamp, although it's not looking great there. What I need to do is just go into edit mode for these, select all of my points, scale Y zero, so it flattens them out. Let's go to top view and make sure that lines up. So G then Y to move those across. That looks about right now. So we've got the basic premise of the lamp. Oh, I've just noticed, which is something you might not notice if you haven't got a reference image. And that's the bendy bit is right at the back of our lamp base. So I can select these two. Let's go to front view. G, then X, move that across. I'll just move it down very slightly as well so they overlap. Again, remember, you can overlap these objects. It's actually really helpful to do that. Then would come the details. I don't think I need to go that far with this session, but what I will show you is how you can edit this curve and add these elements. So these elements up here, this one's got a little bit of detail to it, so I might be tempted just to do that as a separate object. But this one follows the curve quite a lot. There's different possibilities for what to do here, depending on the output of this model. If I needed to adjust this, or let's say make several different lamps that have different bends and so forth, keeping the curve is useful because I can go in and adjust the shape as I need. However, if it's a static model, it's easier to right click and convert this to a mesh. That's under the object menu, convert mesh. Now I can go into edit mode and start editing. So let's say I wanted a base here. I can select this edge loop here, GG to edge slide, probably somewhere around there. Select this face loop here and scale it up. And you can kind of see what's going on there. Right click, shade auto smooth probably. Oh, it hasn't got enough resolution for that. So right click, shade smooth. And I can always add a little bit of structure to this if needed. If I wanted all this detail, I could go in selecting the edge loops, probably adding a few more, beveling them with control B. So you've got two there and then alt E to extrude face along normals and bring them out like so. So you'd have lots of those going all the way up the mesh. But there are lots of options for doing that. So that's how we can add some of that detail in. But again, it's important to block out the shape, get these big shapes in first, then you can start worrying about the details, such as this little light switch here, the plastic base at the bottom, or even the light bulb in there. Those elements are much easier to do once you've got this base shape in. So that is creating a lamp. I'll just undo that element of detail I did there, because I think it looks a bit nicer like that. So hopefully you've gotten okay with that task and you're starting to see now, if you haven't already, how you can look at objects, break them down and consider modeling them for yourself. This is something that's well worth practicing as you look around at the objects around you, have a look at them, think how you would break them down, even on your computer desk at the moment, how would you break those objects down into their smaller parts so you can model them nice and easily. The last consideration to think about is the output. In this case, I've modeled a lamp and from this kind of distance, as you can see here, it's easily identifiable as a lamp because of its silhouette, its structure, its outline. So if I was inserting this into a game, I probably don't need to add the details like the light switch or this other aspect up here, or maybe even the bulb. Because it's such an iconic shape, you easily look at this lamp and think that's a lamp. So sometimes it's a case, especially if you're doing stylized objects, how far do you need to go with those details? And that's essential if you're making your own game and you've got lots of models to create, how far do you actually need to go for the style of the game? And can you change the style of the game so it's a bit simpler to model and it has a sense of style as well? Getting the outline is far more important than those details a lot of the time. So that's something to think about in your projects. From this point, I start getting students to relate what they've learned to their assignments for that module. So I hope you get the idea of how to build anything in Blender and how to go at creating the lamp yourself. The main thing to remember is break the object down into big shapes, then model the big shapes first, then the details last. If you like the style of learning, then do check out the art program and see if it's for you. Let me know what you think and whether this video was helpful in the comments. Thanks for watching. 
and I'll see you next time.